Hey there, boys and girls, it's Miss Fessler, and I'm here today with another read aloud for you. Now, this is a Cherokee story that I'm going to be reading today. And first grade friends are studying Tennessee, and the Cherokee were a native people who lived in Tennessee. So first grade friends, this definitely is for you. But you know what? Anybody can hear the story, and it's a good one. Now, the Cherokee, who were they? Well, they were a Native American tribe who lived here in Tennessee and even down into Georgia. Um, the Cherokee people were a very, um, very proud people. In fact, the Cherokee people had their very own alphabet that they used that a great man, one of their great leaders, Sequoia, came up with. Um, in fact, if you drive around town, you might even see some brown street signs around town that have Cherokee letters written on them. Um, so you'll have to, as you drive around town, um, I know there's some on East Brainerd Road out around Hamilton Place Mall, but you might want to uh, start checking and seeing if you can see some of these, these brown street signs. Okay, well, the Cherokee, just like many native tribes, were big on storytelling. You see, when the Cherokee, um, when they lived here in this part of the country, they didn't have TVs at night. They didn't have iPads. They didn't have computers. They had to... Um, they sat around and they listened to their storyteller in their tribe tell stories. And the stories weren't just for fun. The stories were actually to teach them. And a lot of times the storyteller in the tribe, he would tell stories about how things came to be. So um, he would explain how things were, were first came, how things started. Um, and this was according to what they believed. But this was a very important role in the Cherokee tribe was to be the storyteller. That, that was a very important thing. It was very highly looked upon, like it was a very good job for someone to have in the Cherokee tribe. And so um, their stories were not written down. They were simply told by mouth and they were passed on that way. And this was the way that Cherokee children learned things about their tribe and learn things about who they were. Well, this story today is called The First Strawberries, and it's actually retold by a man named Joseph Bruchek. Now, notice on the book right here, it says retold. A lot of times when we see a book, we talk about who the author is. The author is the one who writes the words, but in this one, it, it doesn't say that he wrote the words. He retold that, which means this story was told to him. And he's retelling it, and he's putting it in a book so that you can hear this story also. Okay, so this is called The First Strawberries. It's retold by Joseph Bruchak, and it's illustrated by Anna Vocek. In this story, we are going to hear how the first strawberries came to be. Do you like strawberries? I sure do. I love strawberries. All right. I am going to read the story today to you. Gwen is going to turn the pages for you. Long ago, when the world was new, the Creator made a man and a woman. The two of them were made at the same time so that neither would be lonesome. They married, and for a long time they lived together and were happy. And so here you see the, the man and the woman, and they are living happily. Then one afternoon, the man came home from hunting and found that the woman had not yet begun to prepare their meal. Instead, she was out picking flowers. The man grew angry. I am hungry, he said in a cold voice. Do you expect me to eat flowers? Now the wife, too, became angry. She had picked those flowers to share their beauty with her husband. Your words hurt me, she said. I will live with you no longer. She turned to the west and began to walk toward the sun. Her husband followed, but her steps were too quick. He could not catch her. He called her name, but she could not hear him. 
He went as fast as he could go, but his wife was much faster. And you can see how much farther ahead the wife is than the husband. Why do you think he's going after her? Hmm. Let's keep reading and see. The son watched as the husband followed her. The son saw how sorry the man was and took pity on him. Pity means he, he kind of felt sorry for him. Are you still angry with your wife? asked the son. No, said the man. I was foolish to speak angry words, but I cannot catch her to tell her that I am sorry. Then I will help you, said the son. The sun shone its light down on the earth in front of the woman. Where its light shone, raspberries grew up. The berries were ripe and they looked good to eat. But the woman paid no attention to them and continued walking. Hmm. Would you stop for some raspberries? Do you like to eat raspberries? Okay, keep, let's keep going. Let's see. Evidently the lady didn't like strawberry, or raspberries, sorry. The sun tried again. It shone down and blueberries grew. They glistened brightly in the sunlight, but the woman paid no attention to them. She only walked on toward the west, leaving her husband farther behind. See all these blueberries? I might have stopped for some blueberries. I do like to eat those. Well, now the sun tried a third time. Where its beams touched the earth, blackberries grew up. They were dark and plump, but the woman's anger was too great, and she did not see them. At last, the sun tried its hardest. It shone its light down in the grass right in front of the woman's feet, and strawberries appeared. They glowed like fire in the grass, and the woman had to stop when she saw them in front of her. Look at all those strawberries. She knelt down, and she plucked one and bit into it. She had never tasted anything like it before. Its sweetness reminded her of how happy she and her husband had been together before they quarreled. Quarrel means to argue. I must gather some of this fruit for my husband, she said, and she began to pick the berries. She was still picking them when the man caught up to her. Oh, she doesn't look angry anymore, does she? I don't think he looks angry either. Forgive me for my hard words, he said to her. And she answered him by sharing the sweetness of the strawberries. So it was that strawberries came into the world. To this day, when the Cherokee people eat strawberries, they are reminded to always be kind to each other and to remember that friendship and respect are as sweet as the taste of red ripe berries. And that is the end of the first strawberries. Now, again, remember, like I said, this is a Cherokee story about how they believe that strawberries first came to be. And I, I've always liked this story and just think it's, a, it's a, fun, a fun story retold by Joseph Bruchak. All right, now this book does have, right down here you see, it does have an AR quiz. Um, so you are welcome to go take the AR quiz on this book. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back later with another. Bye, guys.